CDC stands for the Centers for Disease Control, which is headquartered in Atlanta, Georgia from its beginning, interestingly, really because that's where malaria was in the United States. But it um, is a national and also a huge international organization that is really centered on the control of diseases, not only infectious, uh, but also chronic diseases. All the risk groups for AIDS came forth quite quickly after the first cases uh, in gay men in New York and San Francisco. We at CDC very soon um, got reports of intravenous drug users and then obviously that opened up the whole possibility of blood being the source and very soon uh, uh, treatment centers uh, that were treating uh, hemophilias called and said, we think we have the cases here. Then there were studies that were done and, and uh, the results were dramatic. In 1982, the results of early investigations of cases showed that the transfusion, uh, be it tra transfusion of blood or blood products uh, like Factor VIII, um, was a major risk of um, of contracting the disease. The CDC called together blood bankers, um, communities of interest in Atlanta for an infamous uh, meeting to discuss the understanding that we had and what could be done. The groups that were called together for the initial blood meeting were logical. It was the at-risk community who would be the donors, in this case primarily gay men, uh, who we had very close relationships from the from the start, and then the users, the 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 both the the manufacturers, that is the people that collected the blood or the blood products, um, and then the the actual patients who would use uh, those blood products. Uh, primarily, uh, at that time, uh, that could be understood would be the hemophiliacs who had a long history of using them, and they were all called together to say. We at CDC, even though the number of cases is relatively small, we see this disease that's very deadly affecting um, the uh, uh, various communities, and the meeting didn't really go as planned. There was great uh, denial from the, the both blood transfusion uh, and the Factor VIII uh, manufacturers that this was really a uh, serious disease, and we did not have the virus at that time, so. We couldn't do the virus test, we just looked at the damage to the immune systems and there was denial that, that this disease was transmissible and, and that these people had it. Literally, I was pounding the table saying, wake up, didn't go well. AIDS severely affected the hemophiliac community for very straightforward reasons. And those reasons were the source of the factor eight that was used to treat their hemophilia. And the way that was produced is taking thousands of donors uh, of plasma, putting them together. Every time you injected uh, Factor VIII into you meant a huge exposure to the viruses that were in there. And that was hepatitis and uh, ultimately um, AIDS. Well, I think if we look back at the pharmaceutical industry that made Factor VIII, one could say, what were you thinking? Why would you take paid donors, which were known to have very high risk of hepatitis viruses, and take them by the thousands and put them into a factor eight material? It made no sense whatsoever. Every uh, user of that material would get one of the hepatitis viruses, if not all of them. When AIDS came, uh, which was truly deadly, then one had to rethink the whole process. But up until that time, um, the treatment was full of infectious agents, including HIV. And as a result, we lost a whole generation of hemophiliacs from around the world. I mean, there's no other reason to do what they did except for financial gain. However, if you do have a, a market for treating a chronic disease in people, you really would like those people to be alive. So the stupidity of this thing, you could put crosshairs across many targets of why they would make that material like that, why would they continue to do it, and why would they use the donors that they used. The hemophilia community responded with zest when they started seeing everyone dying around them, but there was a very, very uh, united front, interestingly, in the, in the hemophilia community, which was very dispersed uh, you know, around the country and around the world and not necessarily united in any political sense. And clearly when HIV came uh, and with its disastrous results, not just the community, but the families of hemophiliacs uh, really came forth and spoke loudly.
and as a result, uh, ultimately their health improved dramatically. Ryan White and Ricky Ray were two little boys who just happened to have hemophilia and were affected um, by the resulting infection of HIV from the use of that uh, uh, factor concentrate material. And they were remarkably good in front of the TV camera. The gay community had lots of spokespeople and they were out uh, really uh, educating the society about their challenges. And these two kids were the equivalent for the hemophilia community and were terrific. It, this was not a behavioral choice. This was not a, 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 um, an IV drug addiction. These were two little kids who needed a drug to save their lives. There was a innocence that these two had uh, that helped actually, from all sides, make AIDS a general issue that the society had to address. I think the early response to AIDS was not just uh, uh, homophobia or the at-risk community. From my standpoint, as someone coming from CDC um, and responsible for dealing with epidemics around the world, this was very different. And the reason was we had really evil Republicans in office that did not understand the responsibility that government and public health authorities had in combating dangerous infectious diseases. This was a unique anti-government stand that these Republicans had that it really essentially says we don't need government. If you don't have government, you don't have CDC. And if you don't have CDC, then infectious disease take over. It was very simple and really malpractice at the highest levels of government. Looking back, there's tremendous lesson that comes from HIV. And that is you need the appropriate health authorities to be able to speak honestly and to act in response to dangerous epidemics. And unfortunately, the way we're structured right now, that's in a government system that is really affected by the politics of the government above it. So there needs to be back, if you will, in the old way of having a board of health, something above the CDC, just like we have for the Fed. The CDC needs to be in an independent organization where they can speak the truth and do what's good for public health and not kowtow to these doofuses that uh, undercut the, uh, the welfare and health of the population.